Oh, cracker on a cracker. Half restaurant and half gift shop, part Southern charm and part controversy. Here are 10 secrets Cracker Barrel doesn't want you to know. The Razor's Edge. 2.35 inches, baby. Shift wax. Everybody's heard the spooky Halloween story of the unfortunate trick-or-treaters who found a razor blade stuck in their candied apple. But in the case of Cracker Barrel, it turns out truth was stranger than fiction. In Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, regular customers Irene Gran and her husband dropped into their local Cracker Barrel for their usual lunch. But on this fateful afternoon, their lunch was anything but ordinary. Halfway through her hamburger, 56-year-old Irene was rushed to the hospital after discovering she was mysteriously bleeding from the mouth. Shocked by the event, the restaurant manager dug through her leftovers and discovered a chunk of razor blade buried in the middle of her hamburger patty. What? The incident sparked immediate action from Cracker Barrel as the chain recalled patties from over 300 of their restaurants. Both police investigations and internal investigations were launched into the meatpacking plant itself, as well as the 18 other Cracker Barrel locations in South Carolina. But to this day, it has never been established exactly how the mystery metal wound up in the poor lady's burger. While in the end, Irene Grand didn't require stitches, she had people in stitches of laughter by shockingly declaring her intentions to go back to the same Cracker Barrel for lunch once she'd healed up. It sounds like old habits are hard to break. That's not ketchup. Ketchup. Just like my mom puts on her spaghetti, baby. In 2011, a Cracker Barrel restaurant in Kingwood, Texas served up a stomach-turning special sauce to one unsuspecting customer. Susan Mosher stopped at the location for lunch with her husband, and it didn't take long before she thought something didn't taste right. The side of fries that came with her classic BLT sandwich had a familiar-looking red topping, but it sure didn't taste familiar. Susan noted in an interview that some of her fries and the plate they were sitting on were covered in red fingerprints unmistakably red, that is, with human blood. Naturally, she panicked. A quick line of questioning discovered that one of the line cooks had cut himself while preparing the order, which led to the gruesome incident. To make matters worse, Susan was a cancer survivor and was understandably concerned she might contract a bloodborne illness from the exposure. While the restaurant manager tried to smooth things over by offering to cover the cost of the meal, it wasn't enough to soothe the obvious obvious health concerns. Susan made the reasonable request to have the line cook take a blood test to check for communicable diseases. Company representatives for the restaurant swiftly denied the request and released a statement to the press that suggested she, quote, needs to work with her doctor for medical guidance. The best they could apparently do was issue an apology letter to Susan, included with two $50 gift cards so that she might enjoy her next visit to the chain. Unacceptable! Seriously. The old saying goes that you can't put a price on your health, but it looks like Cracker Barrel begs to differ. Must be something in the water. Water sucks. Gatorade is better. It was May of 2014 when Cracker Barrel customer William Cronin became another victim of a lunch surprise, but his was of the liquid variety. After wolfing down his dinner at a Tennessee Cracker Barrel location, William asked his waitress to bring him a refill to wash it all down with. But instead of another cool ice water, he got a cup full of chemical catastrophe. You folks have a water problem! After a few swallows, he felt a painful burning sensation running down his mouth and a esophagus, causing him to have intense coughing fits and shortness of breath. It turns out that instead of water, the glass had somehow been filled with a chemical kitchen cleaner, and poor William had just chugged it. The concoction in question was known as EcoSan, which is a chlorine-based, specially formulated surface sanitizer commonly used in the food service industry, and is certainly not safe for human consumption. The incident caused him severe and permanent injuries, including reflux pain, bloating, regular cramping, and regular diarrhea. The symptoms were so consistent and severe that they cost Mr. Cronin his job as a factory worker, as he could no longer report to work. After pursuing legal action against Cracker Barrel, William eventually settled a lawsuit with the restaurant chain. The case against the franchise was so overwhelming, it took a jury only 30 minutes to decide if
side in William's favor, ordering the restaurant to compensate him to the tune of $5 million. Not part of a complete breakfast. Where's my soft boiled egg? I scrambled it. While nobody likes to find eggshells in their breakfast, they might seem edible next to this accidental ingredient. In May of 2021, a Cracker Barrel customer had an egg emergency when they discovered a metal staple in their scrambled eggs. And to make matters worse for Cracker Barrel, that customer just happened to be famous rapper Kodak Black, who has over 1 million followers on Instagram, with whom he shared his horror. Oops. Not far behind was Kodak's lawyer, Bradford Cohen, who also posted the photo of the scrambled egg staple to his IG account, suggesting the restaurant reach out to him for comment. Dangerously messing up someone's food is definitely bad publicity, but it might be even worse when it involves famous folks and their lawyers. Show your support by hitting that like button. We do appreciate it. Now, let's keep going. The show goes on! Yeah! Steamed shareholders. No! Just go on. No! It seems all these famously questionable incidents at the customer level start with how the whole operation is being run at the corporate level. In June of 2020, one of Cracker Barrel's largest and longest running ownership groups issued an open letter to management regarding some questionable business practices. That group is the Biglari Capital Corporation, headed by Mr. Sardar Biglari, and they represent almost 9% of the restaurant's ownership by holding over 2 million shares shares in the company, and Mr. Biglari is raising a big fuss. It seems Cracker Barrel's stock just doesn't measure up, plummeting in comparison to its direct competitors like Denny's and the Cheesecake Factory, and losing shareholders upwards of 36% of their investment value. Cracker Barrel has been measuring earnings and losses separately for the restaurant side of the business and the gift store side, but reporting them under one big happy Cracker Barrel umbrella. Liar! Of all the recipes in the cookbook, this one might be a recipe for disaster. Hiring policies. If anyone comes to see you, I'll scare them away. You're hired. It turns out that Cracker Barrel's down-home country image has been a front to hide all kinds of misconduct over the years, and it extends beyond the customer and corporate level to even the hard-working employees themselves. In fact, in 1991, the chain amended its official hiring policies to specifically institute discrimination. With a bit of sneaky wording, they authorized restaurants to fire anyone they considered not to have, quote, traditional American values. And and they weren't talking about apple pie and the 4th of July. The policy was specifically designed to fire anyone who wasn't heterosexual. And crazy as that sounds today, they largely got away with it. At the time, only Massachusetts and Wisconsin had laws against discriminating on the grounds of sexual identity, so there wasn't much legal pushback to be had against the policy. Only nine people were brave enough to come forward and claim they were dismissed on the grounds of this policy. And even though there was no retribution through legal courts, there was through the court of public opinion. There was a large public backlash to the practice, and someone even leaked a copy of the policy to the Los Angeles Times to have it ridiculed in a broader scale. Busted. <laughs> Cracker Barrel quickly backtracked on the whole policy, but that wasn't the end of their discrimination disasters. Tone deaf. I'm very disappointed in you. In 2018, Cracker Barrel was sued by the EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. EEOC is a federal government agency designed to enforce civil rights laws against workplace discrimination, and the restaurant franchise faced discrimination accusations yet again. Again and again and again. The charge was that a location in Maryland refused to hire an applicant for a dishwasher position because they were deaf. When the applicant showed up for the job interview, the store manager manager was noted to be visibly uncomfortable interacting with a disabled person and pretending not to actually be the manager, repeatedly mouthing, she's not here, to the applicant until they left. The location went on to hire three other dishwashers, all of whom were not deaf. The whole thing was charged as a violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act, with the EEOC's regional attorney noting that it was not only illegal, but downright cruel. 
parking lot problems. Are you uncomfortable around people with disabilities? That's okay. Lots of people are. Surprise, surprise. Cracker Barrel has had more than one run-in with the Americans with Disabilities Act. The chain had spent several years in the mid-2010s dodging complaints of sales counters, bathroom stalls, paper towel dispensers, parking spaces, and parking signage that all failed to be handicap accessible. Finally, their day to deal with it in court came when they faced a class action lawsuit in 2014. American Paralympic athlete Sarah Heinzel was the lead plaintiff in the high-profile case, alleging that the handicapped parking spaces and ramps at several restaurant locations she frequented were too steep. Sarah testified she always needed to bring her mom along just to help her get inside the restaurant whenever they went. An investigation shortly uncovered that a staggering total of 107 Cracker Barrel locations across seven different states had handicap ramps and parking spaces that did not meet the federal regulations for use. The lawsuit was eventually settled in 2017, ordering those 107 stores to be brought up to code, and full inspections to be done on no less than 536 of its other restaurant locations. Ah, very nice. The chain paid out $7,500 to Sarah Heinzel for her troubles, and at last, she could go to lunch without bugging her mom for a little help. Repeated racism. I not you the N-word. <laughs> oh, the other N-word. No? No, this list is not stuck on a loop. Cracker Barrel has even more history of discrimination. In 2004, 21 people filed a class action lawsuit against the chain, accusing them of widespread racist actions. The case cited specific incidents of racism occurring in Cracker Barrel locations across 175 cities, largely brought to the forefront by black customers. The group accused the chain of poor treatment toward African Americans, including seating them in separate separate sections from white customers, or refusing to serve them in the restaurant at all while they would move to serve white customers instead. That lawsuit cost the company nearly $9 million, and you'd assume Cracker Barrel learned its lesson. Well, it didn't, because the whole thing happened again two years later. This time, it was their own employees suing Cracker Barrel for racial discrimination. They also cited the usage of racially charged slurs and sexual harassment targeting employees of color. Enough is enough! The payout for that one cost the company another $2 million, and considering Cracker Barrel are clearly a repeat offender, it might just be a matter of time before they have to do it all over again. Let's hope not. Sneaky employee tactics. 100 minus 43, take the one from the zero. Wait. The 2006 lawsuit was not the final time this controversial chain's employees got fed up with things. Yet another class action lawsuit was filed in May of 2021 by Cracker Barrel employees, this time accusing the company of undercutting their pay. 26 pages of evidence have been brought forward in the case showing that the restaurant has repeatedly violated the Fair Labor Standards Act. Lawyers note that there has been a, quote, intensified scheme to rob workers of their tip money, intentionally getting them to do work that doesn't require tips, and sneakily depriving their payouts to pay them less than minimum wage. The tactic was to have workers spend most of their time on menial tasks that technically didn't earn the workers any tips, like stocking supplies, fridge cleaning, or table setting. Why would you do that? Unless... You're trying to trick me somehow. But food service workers require tips to complete their hourly wage, and the whole thing has ended up costing them 20% of their earnings. It's a good thing Cracker Barrel is well-liked for their food, because their treatment of shareholders, customers, and employees would leave a bad taste in anyone's mouth. At least there's that.